What happens when the economy turns down? Zoom is very popular among sales forces, and you know when, when they're making money, when there's money to go after, spare no expense to coordinate, to understand what regions to go after. When the economy turns down, and it's been pretty hot for a decade, what happens? What That's not a bad thing for us, right? If the company tends, to, if the economy turns down, guess what? Nobody is going to travel anymore, right? Everybody is going to use Zoom, right? I think this is probably good for us. <laughs> Usage of Zoom is growing exponentially as schools, universities, and workplaces have shifted online as authorities across the globe have asked people to embrace social distancing. By allowing people to meet face-to-face -face virtually, Zoom has reduced social isolation and has kept many businesses afloat. In this video, we are going to break down how an immigrant from China was able to build a billion dollar company and redefine the way we do business today. My name is Eric Yuan. I'm the founder and CEO of Zoom Video Communications. Called Zoom, and in fact, it's one of the favorite tools for video conferencing for a lot of the big names in Silicon Valley. As long as we stay humble, continue working as hard as we can to keep delivering happiness to our customers, I think it will be okay in the long run. Last year, I started Zoomtopia with love you all, love you all, love you all. This year, I want to say, I love you more than last year. Applied for a visa to the U.S. eight times. Yeah, I, actually, and you still applied again. <laughs> I planned for twenty or thirty times, so actually, <laughs> at that time. I think one thing I learned is never give up. You know, keep trying, keep trying, and keep working hard. And never give up. You know, have a dream, and someday your dream will come true. And today is, uh, you know, our dream is coming true. Right, to be a public announcement. Zoom Video Communications is an American remote conferencing services company headquartered in San Jose, California. The company was founded in 2011 by Eric Yuan, a lead engineer from Cisco Systems that was working on WebEx. Eric Yuan, born 1969, is a billionaire businessman whose parents worked as mining engineers. He was born in Tai'an, Shandong province, and moved to Silicon Valley in 1997 after eight failed attempts to obtain a U.S. visa. As I mentioned, you applied for a visa to the U.S. eight times. Yeah, I, actually, And you still applied again. I planned for 20 or 30 times, so actually, <laughs> at that time. The good news, actually, before I got a decline for this time, you know, I got a visa. So I was born in China and came here in 1997 as a new immigrant and joined WebEx as one of the first several founding engineers and worked on WebEx for many, many years. And then I left Cisco to start Zoom. He earned his bachelor's degree in applied mathematics and a master's degree in engineering and computer science from Shandong University of Science and Technology. He once spent four years working in Japan after his graduation, but was inspired to move to California's Silicon Valley to work for an internet startup after listening to Bill Gates' speech about the dot-com bubble. Eric first envisioned Zoom when he was a freshman in college, in China where he regularly took a 10-hour train ride to visit his girlfriend, now wife. I was only able to see her twice a year, and it took me more than 10 hours to get there by train. I was young then, 18 or 19 years old, and I thought it would be fantastic if in the future there was a device where I could just click a button and see her and talk to her. He detested those rides and used to imagine other ways he could visit his girlfriend without having to travel. That daydream eventually became the starting point for Zoom. Yuan was 27 at the time he arrived in Silicon Valley in 1997. He spoke very little English at the time, so for the first several years, I was just writing code and I was extremely busy. Playing pickup soccer was one of Yuan's only hobbies during that time. In 2007, WebEx was acquired by Cisco, which led him to become Cisco's corporate VP of engineers in charge of collaboration software. He would often meet with customers and during his meetings quickly learned that they weren't happy with the current solutions provided by WebEx. With his technical expertise and vision for the future, he firmly believed he could develop a platform that would solve his customers' problems. So in June of 2011, he decided it was time to make the video communications solutions he had imagined during his college train rides. 
Yuan pitched Cisco a new smartphone-friendly video conferencing system in 2011, but was quickly shut down by his bosses. Cisco was more focused on social networking, trying to make an enterprise like Facebook. Cisco made a mistake. Three years after I left, they realized what I had said was right. Now, you, when you were at Cisco, you weren't really happy with the product that they were creating, and Cisco is the Cisco is the giant in this industry. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, didn't you go to your bosses and say this isn't working? I did actually. You know what? And I was work, working very hard to make WebEx better. Guess what? You know, 13 years later, I did not see a single happy WebEx customer. I feel like I have an obligation to fix that problem. But Cisco is a great company, but it was unwilling to change its collaboration strategy back then. I had no choice but to leave to fix the problem. Essentially, I guess, you know, I created that problem. So. Initially, Yuan faced difficulties trying to convince investors to back his new venture. So he borrowed money from friends and family to get started. After receiving countless rejections, Yuan changed his screensaver to, it can be done, and kept working. Yuan's own wife initially questioned his decision to leave Cisco. I told her, I know it's a long journey and very hard, but if I don't try, I'm going to regret it later. More than 40 colleagues of engineers followed him in his venture, and they were able to launch the Zoom platform in 2012. Yuan had a significant undertaking during his early days. During the early days of Zoom, the former engineer was involved in every part of the business, including customer service. Yuan would personally email every customer that canceled their service. One customer replied to his email and accused him of sending auto-generated emails impersonating the CEO. He said Zoom was a dishonest company. Yuan wrote back to that email and mentioned how it was indeed from him. The customer still didn't believe him, so Yuan offered to meet him on a Zoom call right that minute to prove it was him writing the emails. That call never did take place, but the customer stopped accusing Zoom of being dishonest. One of Zoom's core values is care. Zoom expects its employees to care about the community, the company, their teammates, customers, and themselves. Yuan's management style put him as one of the top CEOs in the country. Glassdoor ranked him number one on Big Company CEO of the Year in 2018 with a 99% approval rating from his employees. So uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Lloyd Blankfein, Mark Benioff, those are the CEOs who have been on this list several years in a row. What are you going to do to stay on it next year? First of all, I admire them. I really like Mark Benioff and Mark Zuckerberg. I think, uh, you know, from our perspective, especially for me as an immigrant, I got to work harder and harder. Make sure keep our employees happy, keep our customer happy. I think it should be fine. Yuan's caregiving philosophy and approach to life has propelled Zoom into becoming the tech giant it is today. Before going public, Zoom raised about $161 million in funding and was backed by major venture capital firms, including Sequoia Capital, Emergence, and Horizon Ventures. Zoom went public in April 2019 with the company issuing over 20 million shares at a price of $36 per share and raising $752 million. Zoom's share price rose 72% on its first trading day alone, boosting Yuan's net worth to the billion dollar mark. Zoom opened for trade just minutes ago, quite a pop. Right now it is up uh, about 75% uh, from where it priced, and I'm with founder and CEO Eric Yuan. Eric, congratulations. Thank Welcome. you. So uh, a couple of years ago, Pinterest was valued right around where it is now, around $12 billion. You guys were less than a billion dollars. Today, the public markets have given you a valuation higher than theirs. Are you surprised? Yes, to some extent, yes. I'm very surprised because, uh, you know, our hard work will be very well paid off. But, uh, you know, we never thought about, you know, this is a price. But uh, again, and uh, we are going to focus on execution. The you know, price is out of our control. Within months of going public, the stock quickly soared to an all-time high above $100, but fell down nearly 40% below its high by the fall time. However, Zoom is considered to be one of 2019's most successful IPOs of the year, as the company was worth more than both Lyft and Pinterest. Today, with a market cap of roughly $38 billion, 
Zoom is currently listed on the NASDAQ and has seen tremendous growth over the last six months despite many businesses and the economy being shut down. What's your take on the American economy, finally, uh, that not only is powering your growth right now, but has helped this company to, to become what it is? I, 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 I'm very optimistic. I think the American economy will do better and better in the future because look at this great culture, open culture, everybody is working very hard. I think, uh, you know, bright future ahead of us. The value of Zoom's shares has more than doubled in the first three months of 2020. The 49-year-old billionaire's net worth has jumped 112% to $7.57 billion in the past three months, and he is now ranked number 207 on Bloomberg's list of the 500 richest people in the world. Before 2020, he wasn't even on the list. Now, Zoom gives organizations and individuals a faster way to communicate relative to audio-only chat and in-person meetings and is not restricted by geography so employees have more flexibility to work from home. The company rose to success because it's affordable, easy to use, and is scalable, so it can support groups of as few as two and as many as 1,000 people, all on video. Because it lets people meet face-to-face -face and provides support for screen sharing, it has truly become a collaboration catalyst and helps build teams across geographies. It has kept many businesses operating and employees to continue working despite the current economic pandemic. Zoom has hosted over 20 billion annualized meeting minutes, and their customer base includes one-third of the Fortune 500 and 90% of the top 200 U.S. universities. Today, despite his undoubtedly busy schedule, Yuan remains a committed father of three with his wife and lives in the wealthy Silicon Valley suburb. Yuan now uses Zoom for nearly all of his business meetings rather than traveling in order to spend more time with his wife and kids. He is well aware of the environmental impact airplanes have in the world and even went so far as to purchase his very own Tesla vehicle. Tesla is currently one of Zoom's customers. While Yuan says his newfound wealth doesn't particularly excite him, he is eager to see what permanent changes his work will have in the world and is more excited by the possibility of convincing more people to embrace remote work. If I was 25, maybe I would be very excited but those things don't have any impact on me. Money is not going to bring me happiness. Millennials grew up realizing that they can get the job done without having to go to the office. Give it maybe 10 years and the millennials become the leaders and then it will become very common. Sooner or later, this is going to be normal because the world does not belong to us anymore. It belongs to the younger generation. Imagine a world where there's no distance barriers no language barriers, no cultural barriers to communicate. What a great world that will be. We look forward to that, and that will be the time when I will announce my retirement. <laughs> oh yes, one more thing I forgot to mention. And if you drink the coffee in the Zoom meeting in 2035, we also have a new premium feature for you. You can click a function called share coffee and a remote participant will be served with a fresh cup of coffee just for all those coffee lovers. Love you all. Thank you. Hey, how's it going guys? JP here. Hope you guys are doing well in your corner of the world. It's a crazy time in the world right now, but I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be making a lot more videos like this one in the future. A lot of videos related to thought leaders and companies that are making an impact in the world today. I did try to increase the quality of the video for this one, and I really do hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want to support my channel, I have started a new Patreon page. Uh, the link is in the description. A lot of the donations would go to help support my work and continue doing what I'm doing. So if you guys want to consider that, uh, like I said, the links are in the description. And I uh, hope you guys stay safe and uh, see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.